We're Miriam and Tongi, and this is Mighty Van. Back in 2019, we decided to buy a van and convert it into a tiny home on wheels. A year later, we were ready to move in and live our dream on the road. With our dog, Philibert, we had plans for an amazing trip across North America. But 2020 had other ideas. With the COVID-19 pandemic, we had to adjust and find ways to explore our beautiful adoptive country of Canada. We got the chance to explore those lands coast to coast through all four seasons. Hi there, and welcome to Heaven's Wildlife Rescue, Rehabilitation and Education Center. HWR is a volunteer-based organization that cares for sick, injured, orphaned, or displaced native Ontario wildlife, with the ultimate goal of returning them back to the wild. HWR is licensed with and inspected by the Ministry of Natural Resources of Canada. It was a dream of Miriam to learn more about wildlife and work with animals up close. So after our time in self-isolation at the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, we decided to spend a month and a half at the center to help them in those difficult times. So if you're curious, Miriam will now open the doors of the center for you. We were a month into the pandemic. Do you remember that all the international travels were cancelled? Organizations like Heaven's Wildlife Center rely mostly on volunteers coming from all over the world. But in 2020, nobody could come and most of the wildlife center were closing in Ontario. So they were in a very urgent need of help. Stop in our travels, we had time, and it was a lifetime dream of mine, so I put myself to work. And we're talking about work. Trained by licensed professionals for the specific species we were helping. Yes, you're going to see a lot of cute moments and a lot of cute animals, but do not try that on your own. You won't have the knowledge or have access to the right medicine and equipment. So I was mostly working in the clinic with the injured animal and the babies. At this stage of their life, you can be a bit more maternal with them. But like any babies, they need to be fed all the time. Four to five times a day between 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. And sometime even later. The clinic is like a mini hospital. You have to follow super strict hygiene rules. Your goal is to help them survive while avoiding disease contamination that might have not been detected yet. You need to change of gloves between each animal or litter. You need to clean every surfaces all the time. Tables, scales, microwave, floor, basically anything that you or the animal touched. Cleaning all the fabrics, towels, blankets, sometimes twice a day. And I was also changing my clothes and shoes before going back to Philibur in order to protect him. The fact that it was mostly me working with the babies in the clinic was also a very good thing, because the animals were getting used to me, and not humans in general. And this is a key aspect of the rehabilitation work, in order to release them later on. So my daily routine in the middle of all that cuteness was very simple and repetitive. Every morning, you need to wave all the babies, even if you have 30 of them, to see if they're growing well and eating enough. This is the most important data at their age. Then cleaning their cages, meaning removing a mix of pee, poop and food by replacing the newspaper and the blankets. Put fresh food or feed them, depending on their age and their needs, with the right equipment. And of course, change their water. And guess what at noon? Back to cleaning the cages. It was a constant battle to keep it neat. Change the food, change the water. At the end of the day, clean the cages, change the food, change the water. And sometimes at night, if needed, again, cleaning everything, giving food and water. All that while disinfecting between each animal. Between feeds, we had other tasks. Depending on how many animals we had in the center, and despite the help of the other volunteers and the owner, we barely had time to do it all. Do the laundry dryer and fold everything back to the cupboards. Prep the food, 
like the specific milks for each species. And cut the fresh ingredients. Wash the dishes, like the food bowl and plates. It was a lot because of the shortage of volunteers. So this is what I'm talking about. You see the type of equipment that is very specific per animal and per age? And also you have the techniques that are very different between a squirrel, a skunk or a raccoon. And especially for the possum, that one is so specific and so scary in order to recreate their mom pouch nipple. Trying that without an expert, you will definitely kill them. This is why those centers are better suited to give exactly what they need and the way they need it. Even though I started alone the first 10 days, other volunteers quickly arrived. And at some point, there were five of us with the owner, Peggy. On a normal year, the center will welcome nine interns. Peggy taught us how to take care of all the animals, what to do when you find them, when they arrive to the center, and she explained a lot of the medical procedures she does. I have a confession to make. Removing ticks from raccoons and squirrels was my personal favorite. I know, it's weird. It was very interesting and eye-opening on many levels. It was very intense, but we saved hundreds of them. And if we were tired, we just had to look at one of them fighting for their survival and remember that we could not feed them just to have like a longer break. When my babies were growing and healing, they moved to the outside cages. The work is really different in those areas. It is all about teaching them to be wild. You bond less with them. It's really a question of just giving them the fresh water and the fresh food and let them eat on their own time. The harder part is to teach them to be afraid of humans again. Bringing this link, forcing them to not associate human with care and food giver is so important. They can't approach humans later when they're going to be released. It's for their own good. What was helping in that transition was forcing meds down their throats. Believe me, it wasn't a party for either side. We had to catch them, force the right dose, and be sure they wouldn't get mixed with the one not yet medicated. It was definitely a good assessment to see who was afraid or not, because every week we had to handle them. All that is necessary to give them the best chances at survival for the long run. Even though there are a lot of cute moments, some strong bonding with some of them, at some point they will reject you. They will be afraid of you and they might want to tell you to go away. And even if it's sad, when it was your baby that you love very much, it simply means that the center did a good job. Oh, I forgot to mention the stars of the center the educational animals. In normal times, a big work of the center and the owner is to educate younger generations. She will bring some former patients that couldn't be released because they're deaf or blind and with which the bonding was strong enough. We weren't interacting a lot with them because they needed to keep the close connection with the owner. What about me, you ask? Well, as you can see here, I found ways to be helpful around the center. I built shelf and storage here and there and took advantage of the early spring to do some work outside. I was still working for my company remotely in Toronto, so I spent the days in the van on my computer with Philibert roaming around on a leash outside in the yard. And after that, I helped out the best I could. As Miriam mentioned, the animals are moved to outside enclosures before they can be released, where they learn to be wild again. The center had some materials on hand, so I offered to build additional cages so they could take in more animals. It was a great way for me to help, since I did not have the proper training the interns did for taking care of the animals. I was never in close contact with them to make sure we kept all the safety protocols Miriam told you about. 
And I'll be honest, after finishing the van, I said, I'm done. Never again. I don't want to build anything anymore. Well, clearly, that didn't last long. And I love spending that time building those tiny animal houses. Closures like this are usually meant for smaller raccoons leaders, or smaller animals, like weasels or possums. So it was also a period of longer days, working until late to be able to make life a bit easier on the animals and the volunteers helping them. We're June 13, and it's the day we're leaving the Wildlife Rescue Center because we heard good news about BC being pretty open even with COVID and everything is going back to normal. So we're gonna go back on the road. The van is road ready right now. And it's time for the last goodbyes with the other volunteers and the animals. Not you, you're staying with us, right? <laughs> you may have to share your crate with a couple of records. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm gonna try to steal a few raccoons. Not sure it's gonna work. Yeah. Not sure it's gonna be a good fit with Billy Bear, but yeah. some are way too cute. You're gonna see that. Maybe a weasel. No, no, weasels smell. Oh yeah, smell that's really snowy. bad. They're freaking cute, but now that they're more juvenile, now they bite. They were not biting before, but now they bite. We'll go see them anyway. Yeah. <laughs> we see you. <laughs> I've got one next to me. Yeah. Don't you think I see you? Of course I see you. Goodbye, babies. Goodbye. <laughs> That's so fast. Oh my gosh. I know. She's attacking. Do you see that? <laughs> Those are the two new non raccoon cages that Tangi did. So that one is to be finished with the wire. So that one is done and complete. or possum or other weasels. <laughs> so possum are not very active during the day. Uh, so usually we only give them food uh, when the sun goes down because it's when they're gonna be, they're gonna start to be very active during the night. But let's see if we can see them. Oh, yes. <laughs> For the squirrels, we're not going to get in because they're crazy. <laughs> when you try to open, yes, like that, if you try to open the door, they're ready to exit right away. <laughs> so it's, it's a constant battle when we need to add food and water because you that have to be- That is to be two of you, right? Yeah, and you have to be so fast to be sure that they're not going to exit at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> and be careful, they bite. And they're gone. <laughs> oh, there he is. <laughs> so even if when they are outside, they need to start not loving us anymore, there is one that still loves us very much because it's one of the first baby I took care. And she arrived before me. She was like three weeks old or something like that, like still closed eyes. And she needed a lot of care and love. And she still recognizes us when we enter. So, her name is Bandit. We're gonna see if she comes. Bandit? Yes, it's my Bandit. Yes, girl. You know my baby. You know my baby. Oh, my baby. 
Oh, you're gonna play with my necklace. Of course you're gonna play with my necklace. That's why usually I don't have any jewelry on me. Oh, my baby. Oh, my baby. How are you, my baby? Oh, I wanted to take you with me, but they said no. And the dog is not okay to have you with us. She's kind of like the mascot of this year because she's like the sweetest baby raccoon. She's never screaming, she's never making any noise, and she's just cute as hell. <laughs> and very playful. Like when she was. Uh huh. Yes, baby girl. When she was in her cage, she was always playing with all the toys we were giving her. And she's very curious and she, she's just a sweetheart. But yeah, it's a good thing that I'm leaving also because it's really time for her to be scared of us. So it means that now, when we're gonna enter, like for the other volunteers, when they're gonna enter the cages, they need to scare her off, scare, scare her off a little. Scare her off. Uh, scream a little, make noises against um, the cage in order for them to be afraid of humans. And I'm very happy to not be there for that step because I would have hate for you to be afraid of me. Oh, she's gonna play. <laughs> ready? Ready. Oh, someone is not ready. He is ready <laughs> to He's stay ready. here. <laughs> Sink. He's ready. Nope. <sighs> Hitting the road again. On the road again. We don't know how to do it anymore. Nope. <laughs> how does that work? Here, here, here. Boy, here. that's not how you do it when you're on the road. Here. Boy, the dog goes. Oh, ow, ow, ow. <laughs> no, no, no. Pinching as hard as he can. Time to go. Besides being a little girl's dream coming true, it was also a great human experience. We were an amazing team. I will keep forever in my heart all the animals we helped and these guys. Plus, I will never forget all the knowledge Peggy gave me. Even if it was a lot of work, we used our breaks to play and bound together. It was lifting our spirit, especially after a rough time like the loss of a baby. And even if I was 10 years older than them, our love for the animals brought us together. It was so nice to be surrounded by people thinking the same way and vibrating for the same reasons. If you want to learn more, check out the links in the description. They have a great website with a lot of information about what to do if you find wildlife and ways you can contribute and donate. They have also a very active Facebook page where you can see the animals and even sponsor them during their stay. Thanks for watching! If you liked the video, share and subscribe, give it a like, and we'll catch you on the next one.